他是拉里·德森斯托克，二零一九年万斯教育奖的个人得主。他在美国的圣地亚哥创办了一所神奇的学校，名字叫做 High Tech High 高科技高中。在这所学校里，学生们通过开展不同的项目来学习，不以分数论成败。而他的大学录取率却能够高达百分之九十八。与此同时，全美的平均水平也才不到七成。My life in education. Has been dedicated to bringing together students and, and putting them in forms of education that most people assume should be separated. Students from all backgrounds and perceived abilities, and technical education with intellectual and artistic pursuits. 罗森斯托克为什么要花大力气去融合学术和职业技术教育呢？其中的缘由可以追溯到他早年的教育经历。大学毕业之后，罗森斯托克在美国波士顿的一所学校教木工课程。在这所学校里，有钱的学生能学习文化课，而穷学生只能学木工。他发现他的学生们实际上很优秀，只不过是没有获得更好的学习机会。这让他意识到，学术教育和职业教育应该是融合到一起的。到了上世纪九十年代，他参与修订了美国的《从学校到工作机会法》。这部法律给了穷人更多的上升机会。法律通过之后，他又参与了一个政府项目，这让他有机会在三年的时间内到全国各地去考察好的教育案例。而在这之后，他终于迎来了实践自己的教育理想的机会。Who wanted to bring in a broader spectrum of have-nots into the tech sector, and they had an idea that maybe they should create a school called High Tech High School. And I said, I would love to try that, but can I take the word school off it? And they said, sure. That's how High Tech High got started. High Tech High 至今呢已经有将近二十年的历史。从一家小型的公立特许学校开始，如今呢，它已经发展成为由十六所特许学校组成的综合网络，覆盖四个校区，约五千七百八十名 K 十二年级的学生。那么，抛开升学率，就项目制学习本身而言，学生们又取得了什么样的成果呢？根据学校的统计，至今呢，学生们已经产出了超过一千个高质量产品，其中呢，包括一部获奖影片、几项发明专利和两百多本的出版图书。素质教育并不仅仅属于精英阶层，在这所免收学费的学校里，有百分之七十二的学生是有色族裔，百分之十三的学生有特殊需求，有一半的学生来自贫困家庭。在招生的时候，海泰泰会通过邮政号码分区，在各区随机的抽选招生学生，这样呢，来自不同社会经济背景的学生就有了平等的入学机会。但是如果回过头来看，无论是在中国还是在美国，大学入学考试仍然是主流的上升通道。在遍地的分数中心论之中 ，High Tech High 的项目制教学还显得十分的离经叛道。在这样的一个离经叛道的学校，素质教育和应试教育究竟如何能够实现双赢？关于 High Tech High， 我有很多的疑问。在万斯大会上，我把这些问题抛给了前一天刚刚领完奖的罗森斯托克。And what we wanted students to do was, much as I was talking about at the academy, is, is of course understand what's going on in the world. Of course, English, history, math, science, all the things that you need to do to get into top colleges.、Mm -hmm. And、um, and we want them to also create new knowledge. And that's why our students have published so many books,、mm -hmm. have invented. So many things. Yeah. So, how could you actually、uh, balance the percentage of different courses? Is the constructive traditional courses、oh, versus the PBL?、Okay. Right now, is a、uh, three to seven, I guess.、Yes. How did you decide? Well, sometimes you do, sometimes you do courses quite directly. I mean,、mm -hmm. it's not all in projects. I think that would make no sense to get into a college in the United States. You have to do two things. You have to have a college statement.、Mm -hmm. And you have to have done well in English, history, math, and science. We have to we sh, we have to honor those four subjects.、Okay. It's a, it's an obligation.、Okay. But there's a lot of creativity that you could do. So, for example, 
the students that are sending up rockets. They're about this tall, mm -hmm. and they love doing them. They come in early in the morning. They don't even want to go home at night. And they're equally females and males. Mm -hmm. And the rockets that they're sending up right now are 2% shy mm -hmm. of breaking the sound barrier. Mm -hmm. And what they're really trying to do is break the sound barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's an example. When you're doing something right now, okay, mm -hmm. what were the courses that you took in high school that made you be able to do this? Well, they were, but they weren't. But what you're doing is something that's extremely professional. Mm -hmm. What these other people with these cameras are doing are extremely professional. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is have them learn the basics yeah. and make use of devices to create new knowledge. Uh, when you talk about PBL um, yeah. project based learning, yeah. which means that that's an innovation, yeah. and but that's on um, standardized courses, yeah. which yeah. means that may be hard to copy. Sometimes it is a little bit, but then you just do direct instruction sometimes too. Mm -hmm. I think for, for anybody in your country who's listening to me speaking right now, mm -hmm. I would say to them, how often in your career, in your work, whatever, medicine, pick it, Mm -hmm. uh, building construction, finance, do you go through the process mm -hmm. of observation, reflection, documentation, and exhibition? It's not this odd new invention, really. No, it's okay, really yeah. the way most of us function, but we don't think about it in schools. That's all. We're just trying to take that structure, okay. which is so necessary, and just uh, meld it into the, the, the top subjects in our yeah. country, English, history, mm -hmm. math, and science. That's all it is. It's not as different as people might think. Mm -hmm. What is different is when you come in mm -hmm. and you see all of the work and inventions that students have created. Teachers also play a very important role. Yeah. But how you... Um, prepare them? Yeah, how you prepare yeah. them and how, how you possibly judge their performance. Okay, we judge their performance by the quality of the work that students do. That's very, very easy. We have big... Yeah. We have a big public exhibition four or five times a year. Mm -hmm. That would mean that you might come in that evening because you have a child in the school mm -hmm. and, um, and you would be there for a few hours. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a voice where the child is, wrote a book and is, re is reading it or talking about and explaining something that they did. It's not always making things that are physical. Sometimes it's doing things that are intellectual. Mm -hmm. Now. The point is, is that um, when a new teacher is learning how to do this and is wondering why no one's looking at their work that much, but we're not making them feel bad, mm -hmm. they're making themselves feel bad, they're feeling a little bit embarrassed. So the motivation mm -hmm. for sophisticated work, we're trying to make it come from the inside out, not from us, from the top down, but from the bottom up, mm -hmm. so they feel the pleasure and satisfaction of having their students describe mm -hmm. very com complicated things. I know you don't, don't want to mention too much about it, the, the transfer of credits to the college, right. but um, actually your students get a higher enrollment rate among when they take this on how do they, how do they do? Yeah, yeah. how do they? Well, there's a few things about college admissions in the United States. Mm -hmm. One of them is if you're a college admissions officer, for example, Basically, every application has to be read twice, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a reader, and let's say I'm a reader, mm -hmm. okay? So do you know how many we have to read in the spring? A, a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, like an investment firm, okay? okay? So now, over a period of time, they said, wow, the people that you referred mm -hmm. did better than the ones that I referred. Okay. So you're a better investor than I am. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what that's how complex is that it has become essentially. If you if a child comes from that school mm -hmm. in China or in, or in the United States compared to that school, mm -hmm. then they say, well, the students that came from that school before really did well. So that transcript really means something. Mm -hmm. Oh, the students that came from that other school, their transcript was very high, mm -hmm. but the students that came from there aren't doing as well as their transcript suggests. So now it's not just the transcript, mm -hmm. it's the data. That, it's like an investment firm. Mm -hmm. So now they have all of this massive data. It was an unintended consequence okay. and um, 
I, I save, you know, college statement has to be written. In fact, my favorite, I have a collection in f over 40 years of the best college statements that ever were written for me. Um, it's a young woman who was Chinese who wrote the very best one. And every time I show it to anybody, and every college wanted her because of what she was able to write. So one thing when Haitakai was beginning, in the ninth grade, mm -hmm. I had students, I would sit down with my class and say, write a college statement. And they'd say, what? I said, just write a college statement. They said, what about? I just want you to get used to it because you're going to have to do a lot of them.